Okay, we're back into our car controller, car game. Very creative name in here, I know. The first thing that I would like to add or do is to go into our script and look at what we are doing so far. So for now, what we're doing is we're asking if input is into the right, we apply this. If input is into the left, we apply this, excuse me, this. And if there is no input, then just, you know, straighten up the wheels. So this is going to snap the rotation and obviously we don't want to do that. We want to apply the steer angle in here. We want to apply some math lerp. So we're going to do that later, but this is going to be a definite for do, to do. So to do, not add steering, but add math lerp. Next thing that would, I would like to do is that we are doing this but we are never asking if we have this wheel. So we're going to add another if, and this if will have to be somewhere up here. So another to do in here is not add steering, but add checks if wheels are present like this. Or maybe you have a more creative way of, you know, describing this. But anyway, the next thing that I would like to add is I would actually like to see a wheel where this wheel slider is. So we're going to add that into a to do, maybe somewhere in here. Since we have a for loop that will iterate through the wheels, we can just use this one and do a to do like this. And in here, we can just say add actual wheel sync with the wheel collide like this. I think this is a good enough description. I don't know. And the last thing, or I guess this is going to be for another video. I would like to have some automatic function that will automatically measure the distance from this to this. And according to that, we will, you know, turn the wheels. So for now, this is what we have. I think this is good enough. These wheels are meeting and that is all that is important for now, like this. They're also meeting in here, but they're not meeting at the right spot. So this is going to be a problem for later. I'm going to disable this and also this. For now, I'm just going to try and test if I can just drop the wheel like this in here and see if this is going to actually rotate. So I'm going to hit play. And it is rotating, but it's not exactly rotating. The problem is that we already have a rotation in here. That's messing up everything that we are trying to do. So one thing that we can do to fix this is actually not use this caliber in here. So I better just, you know, make this disappear like this. And the other thing is that this rotation is doing, well, let's see actually what is happening in here. We are de debugging, trying to debug actually in real time in here. And let's see what we have. So we're at minus 90, but I think this is not the correct one. So if I go in debug mode, I think there's local rotations. This should tell us something about the rotations and it doesn't tell us anything anyway. Okay, so one quick fix is that just drop this out, take all the wheels, undo the rotations. You can't actually try to rotate the wheel because it is handled elsewhere. So this is our actual wheel and it's named Woohoo. So let's name it wheel like this, or actually wheel object or wheel model like this. This already has rotations, which is going to mess up the rotations later. But for now, for now, it should in fact work. And it does. Let's try and do the position as well. All right. I don't think I have to do the position. I just need to do the rotation in the forward axis like this. But I think this has to be a local rotation. Anyway, let's try and do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is add this in here. So local rotation is equal to this steer angle. 
So if this is the rotation that is going in sideways, one of these has to be the rotation that goes forwards and backwards. So I'm going to go back into the game itself because I don't know this. I'm, I'm doing this on, on real, on actual YouTube time, on real time, I, I should say. I don't know. But let's see which rotation changes. So we can see the Y rotation changes in here. And if we go forwards, nothing changes. But we can try and do this in outside of the play mode. And as we can see, this rotation right here is the rotation that we're looking for. But this is going to mess up because this is in global rotation. So we're going to find we're going to have to find another way of, you know, getting the rotation from here. Okay, so I found an actual solution to making the rotation actually follow the wheels rotation back into the game. I keep forgetting to make this larger so you can all see. But in short terms, we cannot use this anymore. However, I'm going to save it and I'm going to add a to do in here. Or actually to do. And in here we will say this. So in the future, if we want to add the brake calipers, this formula or this line of code works perfectly fine. So in order to get the actual rotation, we will have to do a vector three, or actually no, a quaternion rotation. Or actually, let's call it just rot. And we will have to do a vector three position. Let's do a capital plus like this. And let's do, or actually we have to do, is we will have to say wheels in the index of Y. So the current wheel dot collider dot get world pose out rotation and position. So it is complaining at me for some reason. And this is saying that the position should be first, not the rotation. So the position and the rotation like this. Now that we have this, I'm actually not going to use this position, or maybe we will, I don't know, I'm not sure. But for now, we're not using that. We'll use the rot or the rotation, and we will say wheels in the index of i dot collider dot transform. So if you don't know what we are doing in here is that we're accessing this collider. This is a unity component from this wheels, this wheels, is just a list that contains wheels. And what is a wheel? It is just a class that contains the wheel collider, but it also contains a type. So we want to know which wheel is where. This is gonna be useful for later. So now that we, we know that, we will say transform dot rotation is equal to rot. I'm not sure if we have to say local rotation in here, but let's see. I think this, I think this is gonna work pretty well. So if we hit play, we can see already something happened. We can see the wheels are actually turning and the wheels are actually turning. We have a problem right now. <laughs> Our wheel are not behaving like a real wheel. Then the problem is the position as usual. This apparently works fine, but when we do this, you see, this is not working fine. So this is what we're going to have to be looking for. And one quick fix of that is just to do position zero, 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 like this. And I don't know why this is flying up now. This should not be happening. Okay, this is the problem. Um, if I undo this, this is the whole entire wheel. The whole entire wheel has a bunch of stuff inside. But what we're looking for is the wheel or F dummy or whatever this is. If we take this and make this a child of this, the actual wheel, and if we reset, it's going to set it into the center. And now if we do this, it should be all good. So I'm just going to disable this. And let's see now. I think I faced this problem in the past as well. And the problem is that 
we need to have a empty game object of type or actually we'll name it wheel model like this and inside the wheel model we can just drop this and then since this is a child of that we can manipulate this whatever we however we want so let's rotate this to this and i think this should work and it does work the only problem is that the y-axis doesn't seem to work perfectly fine and that is because we will have to be using this position so let's do wheels dot transform dot position is equal to position i think this is correct let's see the only problem is that this position is global and i don't like working with global positions because it messes up everything as we can see it does mess up everything so the problem that we're facing now is that we are rotating the rotating this whole entire wheel but the wheel contains the wheel collider and as well so in general it's not a very good idea to manipulate with this because this actually holds the the wheel collider and if we move the wheel collider the whole entire wheel moves with it so one fix for this is to use a separate wheel or a separate object for that so since we are using this child object what we can do is just translate the position in here so i'm gonna look for a formula to see how i can get all the children of this transform to follow that rotation okay so one thing one method that i am trying to remember is that we can use a method called get child count and once we get that we know how many children we have in here and once we know that we can just apply this translate or this position and rotation into these children in here even though this is not a preferred way of doing it but we're going to do it anyway later on what we can do is a very simple you know naming so we can name this a wheel and then this we can name the caliper like this and then later on we can do some filtering in here and see which one is the wheel and which one is the caliper but for now what we're going to do is just apply these into the children so one way of doing that is to declare a transform because that's all we need we need just a transform so transform and we need an array of transform so we have an array of child transforms like this and this is a new transform and here is where we define the length of the transform and we do that by saying wheels in the index of i dot collider dot transform dot get child count like this and now that we have that we can just iterate through this so we can say for each item into this child transform we can say item dot or actually we don't have to say dot transform because this is already a transform so we can say item dot position is equal to pause and also item dot rotation is equal to that then we can just remove this and i think i think i'm not sure this should work so let's give it a shot let's hit play let's hope we don't get any errors and we do get errors we have many many null references so let's see where it actually crashes We're, it's saying null reference object not set at the line of 43 so at 43 we are already into the for each so before we do a for each we will say if the child transforms dot length is greater than zero so if we do that i think it should be working it is not working so if you haven't guessed already why this is working is why this is not working is because we are never assigning anything anything to these children so before we do item dot position is equal to this the item itself is empty but the length of this is however many children we have of empty 
So we need to actually assign these. So instead of doing item in here, what we can say is wheels dot in, in, in the index of I dot transform, or actually just collider, not real collider, dot transform and not position. But in here we say dot get child in the index. But we don't have an index in here, and that is because we are using it for each. So let's use an index. We'll say int index is equal to zero. And after this, index plus plus. So after we get that, we obviously want to do a dot in here, and we want to say dot position is equal to position, dot rotation is equal to rotation. So I think in theory, what we're doing in here is, or actually should be correct. Let's see if it is correct. And it is correct. I will write. This is very correct. And if we do Shift F, we're still getting some bouncing. I don't know why this bouncing is happening. We are very stable right now. But anyway, let's attach this camera into this object so we have some following going on. So let's do this. Like this. And let's try and play around. It's using like it's it it looks like it's pretty good. But we have no way of knowing how fast we're going. So the next thing that I would like to do is to duplicate this wheel into four wheels and let's name this something better. So let's name this like model. Let's have this model duplicated, put it into this wheel. And I think this is where we have the other problem. And the problem is the rotation is not correct. So let's see if the previous small fix is actually going to do anything. So we used a child object in here to manipulate with the rotation. So let's try to set it back and see if anything happens. And it looks like it did happen. We have wheels that are actually corresponding. That is very nice. So let's continue and, you know, adding these wheels. Okay, now we have all four wheels attached to the wheel or to the car actually, not the wheel. So if I remember correctly from my previous videos, what I can do is we can, in fact, just use this child, or not this one, but the one that we can see. So we just use this. And then what we can do is apply some of this in here. And this should, in fact, work. So we have wheel displacements and we can put it whatever we want. But the one thing that I'm not sure is the wheel camber because this is, yeah. Yeah, with well, this wheel camber and toe, we might take a look in next videos. So for now, what we fixed, this is going really slow, but I wanted to keep it, you know, beginner friendly and we need to know what's going on in here. So we fixed the wheel model. So let's remove this to do in here. And for the next time, I guess we can try and add some lurping in here. And then we can finally start working into the motor torque or, you know, the power of the vehicle. And before we do that, we have to fix the, the wheel basis, obviously. So anyway, um, thank you. We'll see you next time.